Einstein was a dick. And so was Stephen Hawking. Uh, let's start with Einstein. Einstein said, I cannot, nor would I want to, conceive of an individual that survives his physical death. Let feeble souls from fear or absurd egoism cherish such thoughts. That's what Einstein said. Now, that's rather condescending, don't you think? That is rather insulting to anybody who believes in life after death, whether it's part of a religion or a personal belief. Now, what Einstein is saying, to paraphrase him in basic words is, if you believe in life after death, you're a pussy. You're a coward. You're doing it out of fear. That makes you a coward. And either that or you have a huge bloated ego. Now, that's just, that is absurd. If anything's absurd, that takes, that takes a big ego for Einstein to say that, as if he's not afraid of death. Everybody's afraid of death, whether they'll come right out and admit it or not. And if you're not afraid of death, there's something wrong with you. It is ingrained in the human existence to fear death. Death is the removal of your existence. You're not around anymore. You are gone. If that doesn't scare you, then I don't know what the hell does. So it's completely normal and natural to fear death. And yet he's calling these people uh, that believe in the afterlife and have some religion. He's calling them pussies for being afraid of death because the almighty Einstein isn't. No, no. The almighty Albert Einstein doesn't fear death. He's a mighty scientist and he's completely logical and reason. He goes by complete reason and he doesn't fear death. But if you do, you pussy. Not, not, not the very charitable uh, attitude to be taken there, Einstein. Not by a long shot. So that is very offensive to Christians, uh, to Muslims uh, in particular, and that's a great majority, a great, <laughs> great many billions of people there that you've insulted. Uh, so, again, Einstein, eh, not quite the genius everybody thinks he is. Uh, some more on Einstein is <clears throat> that uh, he believed in the steady state system, which is com completely wrong in the face of the Big Bang theory of an ever-evolving and changing universe which all scientists agree upon, but Einstein didn't. He didn't think the universe could have started out of nothing and grew from something tiny into something extremely huge and change and evolve. He thought it was a steady state. He thought it always stayed the same. Completely wrong. And no other scientist even agreed with him on that. Another thing that uh, he believed in or he did not believe in, he did not believe in the randomness and uncertainty of quantum physics. But quantum physics is random and uncertain. And all scientists agree upon that. We all know it is. The uncertainty principle and the randomness inherent in quantum physics and subatomic particles is widely known. And it was during Einstein's time, but he did not believe that. As a matter of fact, Einstein spent the remainder of his years after his genius of his general and special theories of relativity, great achievement, but after that he spent the remaining decades of his life trying to chase down false, erroneous, wrong ideas of the steady state universe and uh, determinism of uh, quantum physics. Completely wasted his life after. so. Yeah, Einstein, not the huge genius everybody thinks he is. Not at all. All right, so let's move on to Stephen Hawking, who was a dick. 
Stephen Hawking said, It is hard to imagine how free will can operate if our behavior is determined by physical law. So it seems that we are no more than biological machines and that free will is just an illusion. Fuck you, Stephen Hawking. I have free will. Everybody I know has free will. Every human in the world has free will. Even you, you fucking dirtbag. What he's doing here is trying to take away your basic humanity. That you can't control yourself. That you're just at the whims of the laws of physics. And of the mechanizations in the universe. You, you don't have... You don't have humanity or soul or a spirit, whatever you want to call it. You don't have that inner being. You are just a fucking machine that just is a puppet of physics and can't do anything for yourself. This probably comes from him being a paraplegic, being so disabled. Uh, Stephen Hawking was confined to a wheelchair, yes, and he... Could, he could not move. He could barely move. Uh, he couldn't speak on his own. He had to have a machine do that for him. And uh, probably very envious of all others who were healthy, the majority of humanity who was healthy. And uh, he just needs to kick everybody in the balls with statements like this out of envy and depression for his own physical his own physical uh, unfortunate state. Also, Stephen Hawking said, we don't know much about aliens, but we do know about humans. If you look at history, contact between humans and less intelligent organisms have often been disastrous from their point of view, and encounters between civilizations with advanced versus primitive technologies have gone badly for the less advanced. So, this is in reference to us being visited by extraterrestrial aliens, uh, which would obviously be much more advanced than us technologically. And he's saying that we should not try to contact uh, extraterrestrials because they would come here and kick our ass and kick us around and make us extremely miserable like, uh, like we have done, like we humans have done to other animals and plants, all the other life on earth, and including ourselves. Well, let me tell you something. I'm glad. I'm glad that the advanced civilizations of this earth, of humanity, have propagated and spread and came to dominion over so much of the world because it brought our intelligence, our culture, our education, our technology, our knowledge, and science, all of that, to all the far corners of the world that would have never had it if it had not been brought to them, or may have taken many, many thousands of years for them to develop on their own. So I don't have a problem with high-tech civilizations of humanity in our history uh, spreading out and occupying vaster areas of this earth and bringing with them the knowledge and science, technology and culture and enlightening the rest of the world and bringing them to a point of a higher existence. And again, this is hawking cutting at the humanity of humanity, if you will. He's slitting the throat of the human species by taking away what at its core is its best and most shining qualities. Taking humanity away from you. Taking humanity away from all humans. And you know what? Hawking you're a traitor to your species. A traitor. How dare you? Moving on to another Stephen Hawking quote. Stephen Hawking said, 
philosophy is dead. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Philosophy is never going to be dead. You know, this physicist prick probably thought, I know so much about science. We don't need anything else. Well, let me tell you something, fuckface, Hawking. Neither you or anybody else is ever going to know anything. Science is not the answer to everything. And many things will go unknown because many things are unknowable in this universe. And science does not and cannot and will never know everything. Philosophy always has a place. Again, this is Hawking trying to remove humanity from people. And again, I will say it is probably because he was a paraplegic. He was sadly debilitated. He couldn't walk. He couldn't talk. But the majority, the vast majority of people can, and he was envious of their health and their ability to live lives being healthy. And so, out of spite, he's trying to take their enjoyment of life away the way his enjoyment of life was taken away. Despicable. Utterly despicable. So, in conclusion, Einstein, Hawking, two giants of science, both physicists who have been upheld by society as being huge, unassailable geniuses. But they were not. No, that they were fallible and egotistical and insulting, offending, condescending bastards. Einstein and Hawking were dicks. Well, that's my thought for the day. Have a good evening. Enter a world of darkness and desolation, of delusion and destruction, of daring and death. Enter the personal hell of Christopher Irving. In the thrilling novel, this Side of Midnight by David Hawk. Christopher, a recluse and a failure, collects corpses for company, and the dead become better friends for him than the living. But a mysterious voice threatening his own death puts Christopher on a mission of violence and murder as the only way to save himself. The line between the living and the dead becomes blurred with deadly consequences in this dark psychological thriller. Get your exciting copy of This Side of Midnight by David Hawk, available in ebook and paperback at Amazon.com. Search This Side of Midnight David Hawk, spelled H A L K, or click on the link in the description below.